very grateful to this team. This team holds a special place in my heart and in my memory. You've come further and done more than a lot of the more talented teams that played at DePaul. I'm very proud of you. Win or lose, I'll still be very proud of you. We have great competitors. You, we know that we don't have the superstars or the All-American basketball players. The way we have to win is we have to play with more intensity, more determination than any team we play. Uh, otherwise, we're not going to win. Uh, we're not going to win on talent alone. This isn't the team, uh, uh, the team when we had the superstars where we could get by on talent. Now we have to fight scratch for every game we're going to win. And uh, this is a team that surprises me whenever they uh, do out on the court. Some nights they look great, and then again we're very mediocre. But uh, when we're playing well, we're a fine ball club. Ray Meyer's 42nd and final season as head coach of the DePaul Blue Demons was launched at the Metro Center in Rockford, with Northern Illinois supplying the opposition. The stronger and quicker DePaul team took command early and continually beat the Huskies to the ball and down the floor. Illinois State visited the Rosemont Horizon on December 3rd for what proved to be an historic occasion. Sparked by an extraordinary second-half performance by freshman Dallas Comagee, the Blue Demons rallied for a 69-66 triumph, giving the coach his 700th career win. The December 10th showdown with Georgetown featured a battle of two undefeated and nationally ranked teams. Led by All-American center Pat Ewing, the Hoyas galloped to a 15-point first-half lead. But what surfaced in the second half was a development that would become DePaul's trademark in 1983-84, the capacity to overcome any obstacle. Stimulated by a roaring sellout crowd, the Blue Demons responded with a thrilling two-point victory. Fittingly, it was senior co-captain Jerry McMillan who sealed the triumph with two last-second free throws. For the first time in 42 years, Ray Meyer took his ball club outside the United States for a basketball game when the Blue Demons journeyed to Japan for an appearance in the Suntory Ball. It was a nerve-wracking time, but DePaul managed to stay unbeaten by winning two games by a total of three points. Purdue supplied the opposition when the Blue Demons returned to the States, and DePaul was equal to the challenge. Junior co-captain Tyrone Corbin had a sensational game and was unstoppable in the second half. A West Coast swing in early January included a visit to St. Mary's that almost ended in the upset of the year. However, the determination of the Blue Demon players won out again, and DePaul escaped with a two-point win. The national television cameras were in place when UAB visited the Horizon in mid-January, and the Blue Demons put on a show that brought down the house. An awesome 40-minute effort lifted DePaul to a 35-point victory and assured the entire country that Ray Meyer's band of fierce fighters were indeed for real. The Blue Demons rolled to their 13th straight victory and soared to number two in the wire service poll. Yeah, the basketball players are coming. Where's Marty Embry? Can you say Marty? Marty Embry here? Tony. Dallas Comedy. Dallas Comedy. What about Lamone Lampley? Is he here? He's not here? But I think the Georgetown game. I think when we got behind and Kenny Patterson and Tyrone Corbin, those kids just said we are not going to lose. That second half, when they gutted it out against obviously a great basketball team, I really thought that in my moment, or in my mind, that was the moment I said this is an excellent basketball team. First of all, they believe that they're unbeatable at home. That's one of the reasons they're unbeaten at home. The other thing is the crowd. We have a crowd that can get behind this team and can intimidate opposing, fan, opposing teams. So I think the crowd and the fact our kids just believe they're not going to lose. In the minds of many basketball experts, DePaul's winning streak would surely come to an end at UCLA on January 28th. Instead, what happened almost made Pauley Pavilion history. The Blue Demon so dominated the Bruins that when the final buzzer sounded, UCLA had absorbed its second worst beating on its sacred home court.
Dallas can jump very little effort and gets up and he's got the longest arms. I know when we had a blazer made for him, they put the thing on and the sleeves were up here. They had to cut the sleeves off and add three inches onto the sleeves. Uh, I think it was the first night for me. I think it was the first night for the teammates. They gave Coach the 700 victory and that was another team who stopped us from making the playoffs last year. And like I said, that was one of our goals to you know, beat the teams to beat us last year. Lawrence hasn't had an opportunity to play, but Lawrence will be a great ball player before he leaves the ball. He has faced some really tough competition in Tyrone Corbin. But I'll make one comment about Lawrence. I think he's handled it with a lot of class. I'm very fortunate to play on Ray Mars' last team, and I will always remember that. That's for sure. Yeah, it's nice, but uh, it's nothing like it's nothing like uh, having that nice weather. Like it, like right now in San Diego, it's maybe 92 degrees. Here it's like 45, you know. And I'm not used to that, but I've adapted very, very well to it. Some friendly people here. DePaul and St. John's hooked up for a nationally televised encounter at the Horizon that featured an array of brilliant individual performances. None was more significant than Ty Corbin's rejection of Bill Winnington's last second shot to send the game into overtime. With time running out in overtime and the score tied, junior guard Kenny Patterson ran the Indian play, which calls for the man with the ball to take the shot if he's open. Patterson was, and his 10-foot jumper lifted DePaul to his 17th consecutive victory. Well, two things are different about this year's DePaul team. I've been here six years, and really, probably what stands out most in my mind is one depth. This is the most depth we've ever had at DePaul. Usually we've been a six-man team. We can go nine, ten deep. I mean, players that could play at other, other situations. I think the other thing is Coach Meyer's done an excellent job of making these players play within their limitations. You know, Kenny Patterson does a great job of penetrating, but Kenny's not the outside scorer, maybe it's some other people. But he's penetrating, gets the ball inside. Kevin's played within his limitations. Marty's done a super job on the defensive board. You know, you put all those together, add the chemistry. I think that's what's made this this DePaul addition team 19 and 2. Plus, I think they're a little extra. I think they really feel that they want to send Coach out in a big way. Defensive tenacity was the key to DePaul's comeback victory over Notre Dame on the Fighting Irish's home court. The win was an especially satisfying moment for the coach since it marked his final visit to his alma mater as the mentor of the Blue Demons. Marty is probably the most improved basketball player on the team. He started out the ball uh, the season. Uh, he couldn't score a basket if they left him alone for an hour. And now he, he's getting, you know, he gets his points in there, and he's done a great job defensively, and particularly against all the big names. Uh, the seven-footers uh, sometimes surprise me because they aren't as physical and uh, as aggressive as, as I think they would be. Uh, for Georgetown or uh, UCLA, of course I get up for those games. For all Americans, I get up for those type of games. I think uh, any center with any kind of reputation would get up for uh, other centers for any any game. If I <laughs> could ever walk that lonely road. <laughs> no, just Kevin Holmes, very pleasant surprise. He's doing much better this year. Uh, Kevin was a, going to be a question mark as a starting forward, but he came back stronger, more agile and he is doing a real good job for us.
at that point, I felt we like closed the doors on UCLA at that point. And it was a good feeling to know that my family and, uh, and everyone saw that once we get it going, the fans get it going. And it really picks us up in the ball game. The annual showdown with arch rival Lyola was another high moment for the Blue Demons as Kenny P displayed the instincts of a cat and the craftiness of a burglar with his skillful play. In the battle for Chicago, DePaul had won out 93 to 77. big games like Georgetown, St. John. But being associated with Coach Meyer has always been a thrill, regardless if I was on the staff or not. Jackson, Embry, Lampley, these guys, they go to class together, they go to lunch together, on the road, they go to dinner together. A lot, uni a lot more unity, Ray. Everybody loves one another. We're one big, happy family. Tony Zeman is a, a rather surprise in, the, in this sense that he came back, I think, thinking that his job was secure. If we're going to go any place in the tournament, we need Tony Jackson. He has great ability. At first, you know, I was sort of scared and nervous because I never played a college game in front of my family and all my friends. And uh, now that I experienced it, uh, if I was to go back next year and play again, I think I'd play a little better. This year, I used about 15 tickets, and I needed more. But uh, my mom had bought, like, 40 tickets in advance before we went out there to play. Lamone Lampley, well, Lamone Lampley's illness kept him out of the starting lineup. He would have had a chance to start. Uh, he became ill, he had intestinal flu, and that gave Marty a, a lock on that job. The reason I came to DePaul is because um, as a uh, youngster in high school, I always wanted to play, I, wa I followed DePaul, and I always wanted to uh, play for DePaul, and when DePaul recruited me, it was like a dream come true. Revenge was on the minds of the Blue Demons when Dayton marched into the horizon on February 22nd. Just four days earlier, the Flyers had scored a stunning upset over DePaul, but there was to be no more upsets for the remainder of the regular season. DePaul forced Dayton to play its game, and when the smoke had cleared, the Blue Demons had registered a 20-point victory and gotten its measure of revenge. probably one of the most underrated basketball players in the country. At 6'6", he does things that 6'8", 6'9", people find difficulty doing. At 6'6", he's rebounding very well. He has improved from game to game. It's more leg strength and determination because I believe I can outjump anybody. And I just go for it. That game meant so much to Coach, you know. We wanted him to have it. And I felt that uh, we would get it for him. And I just felt that it, was, it would be nice to reassure him of the fact. Kenny Patterson, throughout most of the year, has played his role very, very well. We ask him and not to be concerned about his scoring, be more concerned about his running the ball club. Kenny could have scored a lot more points, but he has sacrificed points for assists. Well, basically, I just try to get it to the open man, and on the spur of the moment, if the man pops open while I'm handling the ball, I try to get it to him as quickly as possible. We have all, in turn, is really just like making a basket because you assisted on the basket. It's kind of like your basket, too, your point. Ty Corbin had his high-wire flying act ready for the national TV cameras when Louisville came to the horizon on February 26th. The Blue Demon shot past the Cardinals for win number 21 and then two days later added win number 22 with a resounding 31-point triumph over Evansville. 
the Purple Aces were no match for the hot shooting demons who featured a balanced attack. Reserves Lamone Lampley, Raymond McCoy, Lawrence West, and Jack Latner made major contributions in what truly was an enjoyable victory. is one of my favorites. There's a boy that we asked to come out to help us, and uh, he's done a, a real good job. And what, the surprising thing is, he's getting to be a fine basketball player, and we never figured that. It's an honor and it's a, pr a privilege to play on uh, Coach Meyer's uh, final season. Yeah, they, there's a few guys. I wouldn't like to mention any names, but I'm not afraid of them. You know, I can throw all those just as hard as they can. They just hit him uh, above the neck. I just have to hit him below the waist, that's all. <laughs> but Raymond was a, uh, is a fine, steady basketball player. We used Raymond the, in the latter half of the season as one to uh, hold the lead, protect the lead. He's an excellent free thrower, and Raymond is worth his weight in gold here in practice. I think it's more confidence than anything. Sometimes a player might be a, a bad free throw shooter, sometimes because of technique, but that's usually not the case. I would say more it's more concentrating than anything else. Oh yeah, definitely, because uh, I mean you're only gonna play the way you practice. You know, that's one thing I always find out. So I, if you don't play hard, you don't play well. Thank you. Uh, it's automatic. Jerry McMillan's an outstanding athlete. Uh, he's contributed with his defense and also great desire of playing. He gives us a lot of that fight and fire that we need. Well, you know, when I get hot, it's just that I'm hot, and every time I get the ball, I want to shoot. If coach let me, you know, I prefer to shoot it from half court. Maybe it'll go win it. He'll start laughing, and uh, we'll play a little better. But um, it's just that when I be shooting the ball and everything, I just try to, you know, shoot with confidence, you know, just make all my shots and just um, have a good game and um, just win for him. Never was the Blue Demon team more eager to play than in the second round of the NCAA postseason tournament when a rematch with the Illinois State Redbirds was arranged in Lincoln, Nebraska. The red-hot shooting by Dallas Comagees and Ty Corbin enabled the Blue Demons to take command early and dictate the tempo. Many Blue Demons shined brightly on that Sunday afternoon in mid-March, particularly Corbin, who would go on to qualify for a tryout with the Olympic team, and Kenny Patterson, who controlled the flow of the game and connected on short-range jumpers. DePaul dominated the contest from start to finish, scoring a 75-61 win. the moments that made Ray Meyer's last season so memorable, the one that will always stand out as the most touching and dramatic was the tribute to Paul and its fans paid him in his final game on the bench at the Horizon. The date was March 10, 1984. 
The opponent was Marquette University, and the issue was never in doubt. I started with a win in Chicago, and I want to finish a win in Chicago. That closes the book on the final chapter, the 42nd season and the 1984 DePaul Blue Demons. We look forward to the leadership of Coach Joey Meyer, the start of another basketball legend, the 1985 Blue Demons, and a national championship.